you know the live scope when you're fishing uh it makes it look real easy uh but the guys are catching fish with live scope they've been using it a while they have got got theirs fine-tuned and uh they uh they know where to go find their structure uh if they've already got it marked on waypoints that's a key right there is getting your your, uh, your waypoints set up so at times you can come back and fix fish those points that's got brush on it or boulders rocks or whatever might be hanging off of it uh or humps uh that is the key of spending the hours taking time spending hours and finding your structure and marking those waypoints um and once you got all that set then you can come back with your live scope and uh fish it uh, this is march of the year that we fishing in uh, the big warm-up's coming and these fish are getting ready to head to the bed uh, i'm in the south but uh the fishing is really going to be turned up here in a few weeks um, so i would encourage you to get your graphs out learn those graphs uh so many videos out there on uh tutorials on how to use your down scan and side scan so many good ones out there that i've watched and i've learned so much uh from my graphs uh that i got uh and, and using those to find fish uh one other thing you might want to do if you got the live scope uh i put a little ribbon up front because you know i don't want my boat turning all in the wind when i'm casting and um so i try to put my I, get, I try to go i come up from, you know i'm downwind when i'm fishing and uh that kind of keeps my boat steady and i keep keep on target now i do have a uh, what to call a right height uh turret that way i can spot lock or anchor lock whatever you want to call it and i can still stay on target by moving it that uh that trolling uh, transducer with my uh those foot pedals down there all right there's a there's a common denominator i've looked at so many uh settings on live scope over the years uh, even with the uh upgraded 34 pretty much all the settings stay about the same uh in some cases due to water clarity uh there's some changes that you want to make on your live scope now i'm going to show you what i'm using on live scope and uh, if you can see a see this without all the glare so on my on my gain i kind of run it a little bit high uh between 70 and 75 my color gain that's what's going to make your lures pop so i run that between uh 80 to 90 and then uh on the color scheme you know whatever fits whatever you can see best with your uh uh, with your your eyesight, I like the amber. I like the moss. Uh, I probably stick the moss more than anything, but uh, I don't use the grid overlay. I'm actually going to take that off. So I'm under the uh, sonar setup. The noise eject is on high. TVG is off. Uh, if you get um, in, you know, in the spring when you got all that pollen. A lot of trash in the wa uh, water column uh, you want to turn that down on low that's one of the changes I was speaking about earlier the ghost jack I leave off and then uh, that's pretty much it I don't really mess with much other stuff on here I mean this it has suited me pretty well the autofocus I leave uh, of course I just leave it on uh, the focus I leave on autofocus so let's go out here now one thing i want to tell you the uh, little icon up here with the boat unless you got uh steady cast installed this is not going to work properly otherwise just leave it all all right let's go try some fishing stay over here in front of me that sticks your feet out Look at him. Oh, 
They are in them. They're not here in front of me. about 20 feet out in front of me guys you see them just swimming around they hit that bait ball good boys yeah mm -hmm. yeah he just out there looking around looking around Getting some good bass here. They uh they just out here. Yeah. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. My intent was going out and, and hunting for that, those waypoints uh, that I, I've made that's got some uh, brush on them. And, um, but I got up into the back of this cove and as soon as I put down my live scope, I could see the bass uh, diving into the bait balls and it was just the bait balls just being split open, you know. So for the first hour, I had, I had some fun for that first hour chasing those uh, bass around in those bait balls. So, uh, yeah, and anything uh, you throw in there into a bait ball when the bass are, uh, are jumping on, uh, you're going to end up catching some bass. Uh, well, I end up using a flutter spoon, and I'm going to leave all that in the description. So, you guys, gals, have a great week. God bless all of you. See you later.